Hello and welcome to another tutorial on the basics of mobile technology. This video is a re-recording for clarity, so you may have seen it before. Many people think the mobile phones work with the help of satellites. This is not true. Mobile signals do not travel through satellites. So we have made this video to explain the basics of telecommunications and these same principles apply to mobile wireless technology. Let's start with the basics of how landline phones work. Let's start with the public switch telephone network or PSTN. This is what a lot of people know as the telephone exchange. And this is where we get our landline phone connections from. The main PSTN exchange has multiple exchanges that are distributed across the country. From these exchanges, you get the connection to a cabinet or a pole near your house and then inside your home. The same service provider or SP can provide you with an internet connectivity so you can get the internet from the same landlines as in the old days or via fiber optic cable nowadays. The fiber optics require new circuits and fiber connectivity. So we are going to stick to the copper cable and internet on the same copper line. Once you get the internet via your phone line, you need some kind of splitter to separate the landline and the internet. We are talking about broadband here, not the dial-up connection. So you can connect to your router to the splitter, and in most cases nowadays, you will have a Wi-Fi router that creates Wi-Fi connectivity for all the devices near you. Of course, this is a very simplistic explanation, but this is to help people understand the basics, so we are ignoring some technical details here. So you can now connect your smartphones, tablets, laptops, and everything else that can connect via Wi-Fi. You can also plug the Ethernet cable directly into your router, but very few people do that nowadays. In case of mobile network operators or MNOs, it works in a similar way. The mobile network operators have their own operations center or data centers that contain the core network equipment, which contains information about all the devices and the SIM cards that are in their field or within their operational area. In most cases, this operational area is countrywide, but in some cases, they may be regional operators. So as you would have guessed, the operator needs to be able to connect to any number, whether it's a mobile number or a landline number. So the MNO will have connection to the PSTN network. They also need to provide connectivity to the internet too. The mobile network operators are also called mobile service providers or MSPs for exactly this reason. As most countries have multiple operators, this MNO1 will connect directly to MNO2. This ensures that the calls can go directly between the operators quickly. In some cases in the past, the government or the regulator would stop this from happening because they didn't want the old PSTN to lose any money. So each operator has a core network, which is used for voice as well as data calls. By data calls, we mean anything that requires connection to the internet. So this includes browsing, watching videos, receiving messages over WhatsApp, Twitter, or Facebook. The core network is located in the main data centers. So even though in theory, this is shown as one box, in practice, this will, this will be distributed across multiple data centers. This ensures that the whole network doesn't fail if one site goes down. The core network connects to several base stations that are distributed geographically across the whole network coverage area. This is similar to the way PSTN networks connect to exchanges. The link between the core network and the base stations are known as backhaul. In the old days, when we only had 2G, we would use copper cables for backhaul. We used to have E1 and T1 links, but they were effectively copper cables. Nowadays, you can have many different types of technology for backhaul, as we have explained in one of our other videos. The most popular of these backhaul technology nowadays is fiber and microwaves. For rural areas, you can also have satellites for backhaul connectivity. Now, these base stations are connected to different antenna sites. You can have different combinations as to how many sites a base station can connect to. General assumption is one site, but that site can have multiple technologies, frequencies, directional antennas, etc. These base stations and antennas are known as the access network. The antennas transmit radio frequencies that are different for different technologies like 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G. And within each technology, you can have transmission over multiple different frequencies, 
We have explained it in our radio frequency band and spectrum video in detail. This RF transmission by the antennas is known as air interface. Different kinds of devices can connect to the mobile network via the air interface. The main requirement for the device to connect is that it should contain the cellular modem and should have a valid SIM card. In most cases, for example, your laptop will not have a cellular modem, so it cannot connect to the mobile network. Your tablet may be able to connect to the mobile network, but you may not have a SIM card or a subscription, in which case it cannot use the mobile network. So now if you think about it, your mobile network works in a very similar way to the way telephone exchanges work. So we hope you enjoyed this basic video explaining how mobile technology works in general. We have a lot of tutorials and materials. All our slides are available on our SlideShare channel for perusal and learning at your own pace. You can find the details in the description box below. Thank you and hope to see you again soon.